So welcome everyone. This is the Small Business Social Media Toolkit session. So I think it's a pretty fancy title to say <coughs> use tools for your small business, but it's pretty relevant for anyone in general. Uh, I want to start off with a quick little thing about PodCamp because I know that some people might be their first time. There is technically could also be people watching online. There will be people watching later as well this session. So I wanted to hear the last part. So with PodCamp, you're encouraged to, if you're not enjoying a session, to leave. Don't be offended because if you're not getting something out of it, I want you to find another session that you're getting something out of. Um, and that's what makes it an unconference. So there's you know, always multiple sessions going on at once with the exception of the keynote. And that way we can try and get your most value for your money, um, which is free. So we definitely got your most value for your money, I suppose. Um, myself, personally, now, though I got the excitement out of the way, my name's Will Reynolds Young, and I do a lot of social media for small business, and I guess you could say large business as well. I'm not going to bore you forever with a ton of different things that I do, unless you really, really want to know. Um, I just work for my aunt's skincare company. I do basically everything technical except for make the product. So um, that involves our newsletter, social media. I built our website, the e commerce portion, back end of it, like our, we have our. Mail for mailing out products, software that we use, all that kind of stuff. So I want to ask a couple questions to get an idea of the group as well. Come in and sit back, and enjoy. No problem. The excitement of podcast. Someone can leave the room and it's okay, and someone can come in and it's great too. Ah, that's always the other good part about podcast. This is um, the reason why there's like a big lobby. <laughs> Um, so how many of you actually own a small business, whether it's full-time or part-time? I think you're kind of a yes. Um, and then how many of you are currently using social media for your small business? Okay, so the majority of you are right, so that's great. Um, and how many of you use at least one social media site personally? Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, whole room. Awesome. So we're all on the same page. I want to make sure that, that I'm not teaching things that might not be relevant to you at all. So that's great. Um, so what I always call social media is word of mouth on steroids. Um, and it's really crazy that you think about that this one little thing can blow up that big. But that's literally what social media is. It is one thing can happen, and that can be a good and a bad thing. But when you're a small business, the biggest asset is, is not really actually something that's money at all. It's, it's you. Because you're the one who makes the business. You make it run. Um, and that's what people are typically most interested in. They want to know about your passion of, with the business. Um, when you get started with social media, or even if you have not gotten started with social media yet, the most important thing you need to have is an action plan. You don't just jump in the water and just expect that you're going to be able to swim. You need to create a plan with what you're able to do. Um, and sometimes this might mean partnering with someone else, another local business or whatever, to help engage in that plan and help make it better. Sometimes it's just yourself. Um, but partnering is a great way to enhance that. So the most frequently asked questions when it comes to social media are things like, how do I get more followers and likes? How do I find local customers? How do I not be annoying but make sure I get my messages out? How do I encourage people to reply? Is it okay to ask for a week retweet? So those are some of the kind of things that we're going to go through here. So I'm going to start out with some social media statistics that I think are just crazy. And I did this same exact session last year. And during that session, I gave a bunch of statistics. And I was just astounded to see how much they changed from that. So 72% 
of all internet users are now active on social media. 18 to 29 year olds, 89% of them are active. So you have 72% of all user internet users on social media and then 89% of 18 to 29 year olds are using social media. The 30 to 49 bracket sits at 72%. The, and then the 50 to 60 bracket is 60%. So even among all age groups, there are is a large use of social media. Anyone want to guess what the 65 plus bracket is? Wasn't it like a large? Really so last year I talked about how the 65 plus bracket is the largest growing segment of social media. It now sits at 43 percent. So if I go back and put that in perspective. You have 89% of 18 to 29 year olds, 72% of 30 to 49 year olds, 60% of 50 to 60 year olds. Um, so it's still less than half, but that number is just growing astoundingly constantly. What was it last year? I don't know what it was last year. I was trying to figure out it's for someone to give me a concrete percentage or just concrete numbers, and that's what's so difficult sometimes. The statistic wasn't there. Last year I talked about how. It was the largest growing segment on all networks, but no one would tell me what those numbers were. Um, the interesting thing about social media to me and just business in general is a lot of times we're building a website and we're like, we need a website or we need a web presence, but we're building it for, for this screen right here. I don't want to pick up the laptop too much. I was going to show you the screen, but the dongle is not very good. So we're building it for these screens here, but these are the screens that people are using all the time. So there are 1.01 .01 billion monthly active users on mobile on Facebook versus the 1.28 total active users. 1.01 .01 billion versus 1.28 total active users. So the majority of people are using Facebook on their phone. The majority of <coughs> Twitter users are using Twitter from their phone. 41% of people on LinkedIn are mobile. 40% of YouTube traffic is mobile. And then you have apps like Vine, Snapchat, and Instagram that are all built for mobile. So you really need to live in a world when you're making this content to build it for mobile first almost, because mobile is the thing that's really growing. People always think of it on the computer screen, but that's not usually where people are looking at it. So I mentioned Twitter probably 37 times by now, and how many people are using Twitter in this room right now? Like right literally now, like literally, right literally right now. Literally, yeah, literally, literally just was. I'm okay, creating your so. knowledge bomb. Oh, that's good. <laughs> at, least, at least someone thinks that they're knowledge You're, you're not going to like your pants when you put them in the session. Um, <laughs> I'm looking Sorry. at them, okay. actually. So Are you that's tweeting what, them as I'm tweeting them as you're talking about them? I'm not. I'm not that good. I could, I suppose, but um, that is say, an interesting thing to talk about. So Twitter <laughs> is... <laughs> Twitter is 140 characters. 140 characters kind of doesn't sound like a lot to say something, but there's a lot you can say in 140 characters, so I'm just going to cheat here and just slide that over. Um, that's, that's what is being said in 140 characters to myself there. Um, unfortunately, it's mostly Becky because she just keeps tweeting everything that I say, which is weird, well, I think. Nice. But there's a lot you could say in 140 characters. So I'm going to switch over here to the timeline real quick. So this is literally a live timeline of what is happening right now on Twitter. Like right, right, right now. And I'm going to kind of talk about a little bit of a few things that are going on here. But first I want to make this easier for me to see. Okay. We're good to go now. Go to the top. So at any given moment, on Twitter, there's a lot of noise that happens, and you kind of wonder how do you get your things recognized here. So we're looking at Michael Warbucks, who just retweeted this video. 
you notice something about what's going on here of this screen? What What do you see when you look at it? So like the whole aspect ratio. The whole thing here is taken up by this photo. Do you do you think when you add a photo to a tweet it might like get more engagement because it's see? I mean if you, if I scroll down here to this New York Times, you're gonna see that when I scroll through this timeline, the things that you notice are gonna be the ones with, with pictures. So even though you think is Twitter is all words, pictures are extremely important. To accompany your thing. Question: um, What if I had an arrow for a video? Um, part of my issue is that can you place the video on Twitter? Uh huh. Yeah. So if I if I literally just click this link right here, it's going to take me to that video. So that's what's really cool about Twitter. There's a lot of um, things going on on Twitter where you kind of take yourself away from Twitter in certain ways. Some of those are using Twitter cards now, so it's actually a player inside the tweet. So you can yes. actually click play the audio or video inside the tweet. I could actually, that one that works. I was going to say some of these are probably going to play right inside here. Right. The client that I use allows pictures to be open right here no matter where they are, which is handy. Um, but depending on where they're coming from, you can always link to a site. So, any other tw questions about Twitter before I move on to my next little social network to talk about? I have a question. Sure. Okay, what's this whole deal with the Twitter card? I've never heard of that before. A Twitter card <laughs> is literally, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it, because I haven't explained it a ton of times, so I haven't refined my pitch on Twitter cards. You can put literally a video inside a Twitter card, you can put something like, a single sale if you're selling an item inside of a Twitter card. It's kind of like a little ad with inside Twitter that you create and you control. So, but it allows you to interact within Twitter with it. Okay. So you could buy the item right on Twitter right there. How do you, because like when I'm posting to Twitter, it is, you know, you can put in the pictures and stuff, which that was cool. I didn't realize you could do videos now. So awesome. I don't know when that changed. But I was like, I know you can do pictures. But whenever it comes up on the tweet, it's always very, um, well, the pictures aren't there. Like, you have to click on the link yeah. in order to get the pictures. So I guess, is that the question that I'm asking? How do you get the actual picture, like, within the tweet? Settings, I think. You could uh, it on on photos on So it's going to yeah. depend on what client you're using, yeah. But if most people actually use the, the native Twitter application, and when you use that, you see the pictures right in line with the things. Okay. The videos, in most cases, even if it's a link, are automatically going to show a preview. With a Twitter card, you don't have to click outside of Twitter. That's okay. the idea. Okay. And you can stay within Twitter to do that action. Okay, I understand. Because Twitter wants to keep people more on Twitter. Right. Whereas you, as a business owner, probably at some point are going to want to get them to your website. Maybe not right then, but that would be the concept. So, Facebook, we got going on here. Facebook is really interesting in comparison to Twitter because Twitter is really short lifespan. Like the things that are happening right now on Twitter here, like they're probably not going to be looked at an hour from now, more than likely. Um, but on Facebook, things can last for days easily. Um, more often, the engagement is actually within the first five hours on Facebook, 75% of the time. So even though you're looking at a longer span than Twitter, you're not looking forever. The content is going to be there forever, though. So just like Twitter, images are going to perform better again. So what I tell people when they're looking to promote something for their business, or they're just looking to talk about their business, just in general, is pictures are your friend. I always tell my aunt who owns the company, just, just take every picture you ever can and just give it to me. Because as long as we can keep those pictures organized, they're going to be useful to us at some point. Whether it is an athlete that we have that was climbing something and we need to promote them next week and we don't know about it yet because they did something really awesome, or it's just 
us standing there and maybe we want to make a Christmas card and we want a picture of us to personalize it. So pictures of your friends. Um, when you're on Facebook, you're usually using a brand page for small business. And that's something I see a lot that's done wrong. You can't use a profile page. It shouldn't be done. It's against the terms of service of Facebook. And eventually, um, you're more than likely going to get slapped on the wrist from Facebook from it. So as encouraging as it sounds to do, don't do it. Try to have to play within your rules for each place that you're going. Um, so the best way to get boost from your posts is without pay is to share it on your own page and then ask your friends and family to engage in that sharing as well. Um, until you start getting an audience that is going to be interested in sharing your posts, you need to kind of work your own social circle. Um, the other things that you need to do on Facebook and Twitter and just in general is you need to post things that are interesting and I can't tell you what's going to be interesting to your audience, unfortunately. I wish I could say you post this and it would be great. Um, you have to figure it out for your own, unfortunately. You need to know, just by guessing, posting different things at different times to figure out what works and what doesn't. And the awesome thing is, is one of your when one of your posts is doing well, Facebook really wants you to know. They send you a notification. They literally say, this post is performing 80% better, 90% better than your other posts. But you can also see at the bottom of the post how well it is performing as well. You can see how many people have seen it. Let me show you that real quick here. So, something that I organize on a monthly basis is called Pittsburgh Tweet Up. You can see a whopping seven people saw this post that I posted this morning. It wasn't something I specifically posted there. It was auto-generated by Facebook. But you can look at this number, and obviously when this number is higher, that's better. But you also need to look at did people comment on it, did they like it, did they share it. And you can see all of those things within this area right here. You were frustrated with uh, Facebook as most businesses we talk to anymore? The mod, oh, sorry, I didn't. It, I know, it doesn't seem like anyone's happy with the way Facebook's uh, like engines are uh, pushing content they want to, and like, you know, it's random chance. It's you must be reading my mind or something. That was like literally the next thing I was going to say. Yeah. That was going to be my segue, actually. I haven't heard anyone be happy about it in the last year or two. So here's the interesting, really interesting thing about that. So let's think about the number of people are on Facebook. It is absurd. I have the number. So you have 1.28 billion people that are active on Facebook. It's a lot of people. So unfortunately, they can't really show you everything that you're interested in. If you think about just in this conference setting, you probably read the four sessions that were here and like, this title sounds great, that's good. But I also kind of like this one. So you had to make a decision. Unfortunately, Facebook is making that decision for you and not really getting a ton of input. They're trying to kind of read your mind, but they can't show you everything unfortunately, or fortunately. I mean, if they really did show you everything in order, it might get super boring for you. So in one of one of the ways, it's a blessing. In another way, it's not so. <coughs> um, so this is where it gets to an important thing that I was starting to allude to. While there are a bunch of social networks, I can't tell you which one is going to be best for you, unfortunately. I can only try and guide you about each social network. Personally, for skin nourishment, a company that uh, my aunt owns and I work for, we don't perform well on Facebook. We have a really, really nice following on Facebook here, um, but it, it doesn't really work out for us. It's not a good place for me to spend my time all the time. I get really good reactions from Twitter and Instagram mostly, but we maintain presences on all of these networks, so that's an important thing to think about. If you do set up a Facebook page, and I personally go to your business, which I'm going to say is Bob Sets, um, because I hear it's good. Um, if I go to your Facebook page and I see you have been posted in there in two years, I'm going to be like, what the crap, guys? I thought you guys were great. Why aren't you posting there? This is the social network I love. 
So that's an important thing to remember, that if you start a page on Facebook, even though I'm not a huge Facebook fan, and even though that it's not our number one social network, we are still posting on Facebook on a regular basis. Stop cheating, you're looking at my notes. Look away. time I switch between this, it switches back. But you can't cheat with my notes. That's the problem. So, on this page, you see that recently we have actually done things. Even though we're not posting every day like we used to. We have our newsletter here that just posted that's 20% off, and it posted a nice little picture with inside it the link that it had. We go down here, we talk about our new home page that we just launched, and there's a really cool picture on it. But do you see something here that I'm doing in this post? Which is, you, if I scroll down, you're going to see the other thing that I'm doing. I'm trying to get interaction from people, because the way people see your posts is you get interaction from them. So, I say, hey, we have a new home page. So if I show my new home page to you right here, you're probably going to be like, well, that's fantastic. Okay, well, see you there. Um, so I want to say, hey, we have a new homepage. What do, you, what do you think about it? Really, what do you think about it? <laughs> um, Can you tell so, really likes it? <laughs> I really it's do. Fantastic. I do it like it. It's really great. Um, so I want to, you, you get interaction by saying, you know, What's going on here? So maybe you guys are deciding and you're saying, hey, we want to launch skincare brand A or skincare brand B, and we have two different scents we want to figure out. So maybe, maybe it's a good time to ask your audience. The first time, you're probably not going to get 3,000 replies. You're probably not going to even get 10 replies. If you're lucky, you'll get five or so. But that's a start because you need to start engaging your audience to actually get them to engage back. Um, it can be depressing sometimes. You might never get any answers. It still happens. I like to put this see if that's the home screen you're going to see. You open up that. It is indeed the exact picture from the exact site. So as I scroll down here, are you redone with our Christmas shopping yet? We happen to have this code here. Use it. Another photo here. Wanted to show you some different post types that we're playing with here. So we're always experimenting on different post types. And you can see, as I said, a little spot there, how many people it was reached on. And as you click on it, it gives you a bunch more information on it as well. Well, when you ask for people to share, there's a little thing down there that says share. Who did it share it with? That shares it with their friends. Right. Well, it depends on what they choose. You can, like, you can specifically you can share it with a particular person. You can share it in a private message. You can share it on your timeline. You can share it on your page if you have a page. The default one that it is shared with is your friend. Right. You can obviously share a billion different ways, but friends is the first one that comes up, and it would be the most common with the exception of, I'm giving you a link directly, kind of way. Is that the same as kind of retweet? Yeah. Yep. Is, so, there, is there three or four platforms that you recommend definitely to be on? I mean, I'm a big fan of Twitter, but like I said before, I can't really, as much as I want to say, hey, this is the best thing for your business, for sure. I can't really tell you, for sure. I mean, I can guess. Like if you told me what your business was and maybe what your fans were telling me, I can make educated guesses, but you kind of have to 
experiment a little bit yourself. Obviously, we know the big ones. We have Twitter. We have Facebook. We have LinkedIn. We have Google+. Plus, we have Pinterest. We have Instagram. We have Vine. We have Snapchat. We have YouTube. We have Tumblr. But then one of the most popular ones is maybe it would be a good idea to create some content on your own blog actually, on your own company blog. So I'm going to use the skincare example again, just because it happens to be what I'm related to. But a company blog is a really, really great way um, to reach out to your customers. And I'm not talking about saying, hey, we released this new fragrance and it's really, really great. I'm talking about educating your customers on your product, but just in general, educating your customers. So if you look here, this is the Skin Nourishment Company blog. And we had, we, we invited someone who is a customer to write a post for us, Fitting into Cross Training by Shanae. And I never met this person in my life, but I found them through Twitter. I was like, hey, it looks like you have an interesting story and I'd love if you would share it with us. And be great. So she shared her story. Maybe something a little more formal we could go with. Like we have climbing hand care. And 10 things I hate about climb on bar and cream by Jaylon. Um, she is one of our athletes. So she's someone that we pay to sponsor. But again, we're getting content from the community. Um, as we scroll down here. cross-training hand care. So this one was actually done by me. Um, so the content on your blog, your company blog, doesn't just have to come from you. I also ask my aunt to create something. I spice it up a little bit, change it, you know, maybe get a picture, maybe uh, add a little of my own thing on it. Something I always like to do personally on Facebook when I'm asking people, you know, something like, what's your favorite Climon product? Well, that's a really great thing to ask for to your, of your customers. But maybe they want to know what's your favorite product and why. So I make a habit of asking everyone in the office, I'm like, what's your favorite, what's your favorite product and why? And I just share that. So it personalizes a little bit rather than making it something just generic. So here's another article, Coffee in the Wilderness, that we brought, got from someone here. A story of climbing for change campaign. So as you can tell, there's a wide variety of things that we're doing here in, in, inside of this. And I was testing a bunch of things, seeing what worked for us. I'm going to go through some tools here. I'm going to try and allow some more time for some general questions because, fortunately, there is so much to learn here that you're never going to be able to learn it all in this session. I'm still learning, and I will always be learning this stuff because there's no such thing as a social media expert, and there's no such thing as someone who is the best person I've ever at Facebook. We're always all going to be learning the best way to do things. That's why we have to share knowledge with each other. So some applications that I find helpful in different ways. So the thing that I had up on the screen before we started was an application called TweetBot. It's the application I use personally for Twitter. It's an iPhone client, and it's also for my Mac. But there's a bunch of other applications out there as well if you don't have a Mac. A really popular one that's awesome is actually called TweetDeck. You're able to view several streams at once. So I'm going to do something fun here. And something that I would literally do for work. And this is one of the most powerful things on Twitter, which is rarely ever used. And it's a secret, big secret, but not really. It's a terrible secret, actually, that is not kept at all. So I'm going to open the other application that I like to use, which is called Echo Phone. And this application is on every single client ever imaginable, except for Linux. I'm sorry. It's Linux. Um, 
So I'm going to look inside here, and this is literally something I do on a regular basis here. Something called Twitter search, and I can reach it on any client or just on the Twitter website. Actually, I'll do it on the Twitter website. I was going to do it on my actual client, but we'll do it on the Twitter website. That might be a better place. So it's search.twitter.com, and we're able to search anything that ever is happening on Twitter the entire time right now. So what we did before is we searched PCPGH9. And we saw, in my thing, a stream, but it's aggregating pictures up here. And we have, oh, look, there's a picture of me. Another picture of me. Apparently it's just all me right now, which is really <laughs> creepy. I didn't plan that whatsoever. Here we go. Someone else. That's what I was looking for. Pretty excessive presentation on streaming video games online by Mike Sorgatron. So I'm going to go ahead here, and I'm going to say something genuinely true, but I'm going to have to log into Twitter here first. So don't copy my password or anything, or my email. I have a super secret password, one, two, three, but that was close. Same as my match luggage. Oh, <laughs> I'm giving everything away yeah, here. Mine's all gone. Ah! Apparently, I'm going to get a verification code now. <laughs> Isn't that great? Here we go. There's my verification code. I have now verified my identity to Twitter. This is great. So i got to find this tweet again. There we go. Oh, okay. I'll reply to this one instead. Um, so, this is Pittsburgh Science Nerd. I'm going to say, Aw, We miss you. We miss you. Now, that might be something weird to say to a complete stranger. She's not a complete stranger, so it's not super weird. Um, but I'm going to try and go to another tweet here. Oh, no. More tweets. Oh, here we go. This is an awesome one. So thanks to everyone who came to our PCPG design session at Pittsburgh Foods. So that we need more digital marketers. We have jobs. I saw, saw this one last night. just 23 hours ago. But... What I will literally do after this conference is I'm going to look through everyone who tweeted with this hashtag. I'm going to find things that are interesting that they're doing, find interesting that I'm doing. It's about the community here, but it's also about the community online. And that's how you create a community, by interacting with your community. What I would do for work is, I'm going to skip back to my application here, is I have these super secret hashtags of things that I search all the time. But I search CrossFit hands all the time. So our product is something that helps with CrossFit yeah, hands. Kind of, that's a little bit gross. And you get some great graphic pictures going on there, but that's what happens in CrossFit. Um, so I would actually reply to these with an article, not that we specifically posted, but an article that would be helpful to them. It's not something that's blatantly promoting us. That's not what you do here. The idea is to add value to what they're doing. So if I was a real estate agent, I might be searching for buying house. And on search.twitter.com, you can literally say, I only want to know people buying a house in this area. So you can say Pittsburgh, or you can say Tampa. Um, and you can then go in here and say, oh, look, whoever my might be. Oh, so I could find maybe a, a marriage here proposal. <laughs> maybe. If I'm looking for someone to marry. Does anyone else in here have a business that I might want to try and figure out something for real quick? No? No one wants to offer it up. Fire reading. Okay, so I'm going to use, oh, wait, I mean, I maybe entertainer, hire entertainer. So here's someone completely spamming a lead. <laughs> that is exactly what you don't do right there. You have to watch what kind of entertainer you might get with a search like that. I know, right? That's pretty. Yeah, that's what I was trying to avoid here. So I'm going to probably play around with my 
fire entertaining fun. But what the idea is that you search things that people might be talking about that are related to entertainers. I mean, like social groups like uh, Toastmasters, uh -huh. something like that. What would be something you would kind of look at to do with them? Toastmasters, I'm not specifically familiar with. Well, it's a public speaking club. Okay, so it's like a, Inter it's international. Mm -hmm. It's like a community chambers kind of. Not right? but, no. it's international. It's people who are say if you have a fear of public speaking, you can go there. It's kind of like a safe environment. There's all over. The world, that kind of thing. I've, yeah, I've heard the name like three thousand times. So, right. So, someone they're looking no, it's a, it's, for every. It's basically, you call it education, but it's basically people who want to do better presentations and do uh, feel comfortable, feel comfortable speaking in public, whether it be whether it be presentations or like yourself just being in front of people. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, what it sounds like is, again, it's a community that if you want to be involved in, you should go get involved in. If you want to be in front of the community or you want to be teaching or educating, then you need to start connecting with the people there who are in charge, who are the leaders of the group. But you're not going to do that by walking up and saying, hey, Hey, Becky, I hear that you arrange this thing called PodCamp. Here's my business card. See you. Becky is not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did I interrupt her wonderful tweet, I'm sure she was sending, but that, that didn't get anything. So this is a really great quote that um, our keynote speaker gave yesterday, actually, that is totally related to this. And I love it maybe a little too much. So I am going to share it here. So it is, you can make more friends in two months by becoming more interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get people interested in you. There we go. I got it. That was from the keynote yesterday morning. And by walking up to Becky and just giving my card, I'm not, I'm not going to get any value out of it. The way that the best value is going to come is, hey, Becky, what do you do? Stuff. Okay. Stuff and things. That's stuff some interesting things. stuff that you're doing. What kind of things are you doing with the stuff and things? Because I'm interested in about it. And if you're not interested about it, that's fine. You should move along. But there are people out there that you can connect with that are going to be interesting. I promise you. There's people out there in this world that are interesting. So I'm going to try and run through some more apps here. And I'm going to actually put my notes right up there for you. That way you can see some of the tools that I was mentioning. And this is how I cheat for the session. So I'm going to try and go through them quickly because we're almost out of time here. But interesting tools to do. So Google Analytics is something that is super, super powerful. And I couldn't even begin to pretend to use it. And I use it all the time. There is so much power behind it, but it also is super simple to use in many ways. Um, which is good. It allows you to see how many people are visiting your website. It allows you to see if you're an e-commerce site, where they're coming from and where they're buying from. And it allows you to see people leaving your site. It allows you to see, every, like, I couldn't even begin to list everything it does. Did they look at the pictures? Did they browse? Yes, it'll tell you more than you ever wanted to know about your site, maybe in your life. So it's it's yes, it's like start telling people about these tools. They're like, wait, when I do this, that is shown. Yeah, yeah. That's when everybody moves to the incognito page. That's when they're all like running the stairs. Yeah. There you go. Or 
our lap from yes. Google I Analytics. Was I mentioned it earlier. Google Plus. Mm -hmm. it, is that like how legit is Google Plus? I mean, I've heard on both sides. Oh. Yeah. Like people are saying it's a, it's not worth much, but Google also rules the world. Like, how do you? Right. So in like every kind of kingdom, Google you you nail it right there. Google kind of rules the world. And like I said with Facebook, you, you have to play within their rules if you're going to play the game. So I maintain a presence on Google+. Plus. It's not something I focus a ton of time on. However, if you were to talk to Douglas Derrida and you were to talk about drinking with him, Google+, Plus has an insane community of people with craft beer. There are communities on Google+, Plus that are just insanely interactive. And obviously, you can find these communities all over. But Google+, Plus, from what I've seen and what I've interacted on the outside, those communities will far surpass anything. So if you find a community that's related to something there, then definitely get involved. Otherwise, I kind of maintain a passive presence there. Previously, so what was yeah, that? I was going to say, there's an SEO element that's associated with Google+. Plus. It, it dropped off a little bit recently, and that's what's interesting. It depends on the engagement level that's on the post. But here's what the big thing that was about Google+. Plus: If you were writing something, you were able to get your picture on it, and that picture was a huge engagement booster just by adding your Google+, Plus profile to something that you clicked before. But in the end of the day, it's always about engagement. So if you're creating content that no one is engaging with, you might need to look at what content you're creating and how you're presenting it. Some other tools here. Mention, social mention, Google Alerts. They're all kind of search on the web on steroids. So mention is the one that's super, super powerful, but it's kind of gotten expensive recently. Google Alerts is free. Social mention is free to a point. But they allow you to see what's happening on other blogs based on terms that you're looking at. And they can be really great for maybe looking at competitors, maybe looking at people who are also interested in the same things that you're interested in, but most commonly I use them for people mentioning our products that might not know that we're interacting on the web. Because there's probably people out there that interact on the web that you don't know about or might not know that you're there. So some other tools. We have talked about Echo Phone, Echo Phone, Jing, J-I-N-G, it's a screen capture tool, Dropbox, Statagram. One that I really, really love. I think it's what's important. What? Yeah, they've changed something else. Um, it is called followup.cc. So it allows you to follow up with people easily by saying, okay, I wrote an email to you, and I said, hey, it was great meeting you at PodCamp. I was really interested about the stuff and things that you were talking about. Let's grab coffee and chat next week. And I CC, follow CC, and say, remind me to follow up in a week with you if you don't reply. It can get a lot more complicated than that. But the idea is that it allows you to follow up with people automatically in the way that in a week from now, it's just automatically going to say, follow up with XYZ person because you CC them on the email. Is there a charge with that? Or? There is a charge. It is a freemium product. So it's free to a certain point. And then you have to start paying for it. It is rather cheap in comparison, but cheap is relative as well. Things to save things for later, like, hey, I saw this, but I can't do it right now type of thing. Pocket, or if you really want to get complicated, Evernote. That way, when you're, whether you're on your phone or whether you're on your computer, are able to save something and hey, I want to look at this later than already. Right. Whether it's a link or whether it's a video. Things for finding maybe articles about your subject. Site, Z I T E. Uh, 
it's an aggregator for news. It's an application, I believe, for I, it's for iPhone, but I'm pretty positive it's for Android phones too. And it aggregates based on your interests. So you can say, hey, I want to hear about business, I want to hear about social media, or I want to hear about skincare, and kind of start aggregating those posts for you. A really, really powerful kind of place to find a community, like I was talking about Google Plus <coughs> communities, Reddit is a great source for communities. So there's a what they call subreddit for Pittsburgh, and that is a really great place for me to interact for Pittsburgh Twitter. But it's also a great place for me to interact just in general because I like Pittsburgh. But there's literally subreddits for every single topic under the sun and beyond the sun. I talked about this in my other session. Is people sometimes ask, like, I have images I want, and I need to share images, but I don't have images to share. So you can't just go to Google Images and get an image. That's totally illegal. And while it doesn't seem super illegal, it is definitely illegal, and it's going to come back to you. So the way you can get around this, perhaps. Um, number one. Take your own images. Please take your own images if you can. We have these awesome smartphones here. They have really, really, really good cameras in most cases, and they're really powerful. Maybe it's not something you have an image of. Maybe I want a picture of a volcano. Probably haven't visited one recently. So I might go to a site like Flickr. And Flickr on there has an advanced search, and inside the advanced search there's something called Creative Commons. And you need to be careful depending on what you're using it for. But I would tell you in most cases for your business, like 99.9% .9 of the time, you need something that is for commercial use, more than likely. So there is a commercial use license that it literally you check a box and it says commercial use and this person posted this photo and you can use it for commercial use, but you need to give them credit. So if you're writing a newsletter, you would post the picture, and in the caption you would say, photo by their Flickr username, and you would link it to their photo on Flickr. So you need to give them credit. If you're not giving them credit, you've just basically stolen the image, just like taking down the images. I, while I like to do that, giving credit is not always the easiest thing to do. Like if I'm posting an image on Twitter, there's not a lot of space there. Maybe it is something important. It is something for your business, so you might want to throw a few bucks. There's tons and tons of sites that allow you to buy photos for a really, really reasonable price. I don't really have anyone specifically that I love. I can't really just go where I find the best image, but there are so many of them where you can just grab a great image for like three bucks, four bucks. If you really find yourself using images all the time, there's subscription services that give you an amazing amount of images that you would just go crazy with. The last one, or perhaps most obvious, does anyone want to guess where you might find images from? You almost, I feel like you had it. I feel like you had it. You're thinking about it. You're going to say it. You're going to say somebody else say it first. Your fans. So, I've talked about community, if not 37 times, like 38 times now. Your fans are probably more than happy to get a shout out from you with their image. But once again, you need to give them credit. While they might want to say, oh, no, 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 use it for whatever you want. You should be giving them credit. They're your fans. They're someone who likes your product, whatever you're doing. They would be enthused to have a shout out from you. And it's awesome for you, too. It's a win-win situation. <laughs> so maybe you see that your fan posts this image of you with the really awesome t-shirt that you just sold them, and it's just at the Grand Canyon, and it's super awesome, and you want to share it on your Facebook page. Send them a quick message. Hey, really awesome fan. I saw your photo at the Grand Canyon with our product. Okay, if we share it on our Facebook page, love to shout you out. You create a nice post on your Facebook page. Hey, really awesome fan here was at the Grand Canyon showing off. I love the Grand Canyon. It's a really cool place to visit. Where would you like to visit? Last thing here. After this session, 
I'm going to have some random notes that I'll put up on my personal blog. It's uh, wrry.me slash blog. So it's my initials, worry, LPO, wrry .me slash blog. I also encourage you to maybe not tackle me in the hall because that might hurt, but say hi in the hall. Happy to answer any questions and go further there. But there's also some other folks that I'll point you to that have some interesting content on their blog. One guy's name is Sean Graham. He has a really interesting small business blog. He's from Pittsburgh. He's a blood camp attendee. He creates some awesome stuff on there. A really, really popular guy. His name's Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V. creates some really, really interesting content. He's been a great inspiration for me. Another guy on marketing, his name is Scott. It's a really big blog as well. But there's also a company blog I'm going to point you to as well because there's a lot of companies out there that create really interesting content. Webs, actually, literally just webs. They allow, they create websites, really easy websites. They have really great kind of beginner type articles. Uh, and then also the Buffer blog. So, any other last questions? If it is four minutes till, and you probably want to go eat lunch. Okay. Enjoy the rest of Pod Camp, everyone.